Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. On much request, I've started this series of talking about design patterns in JavaScript. And in this video, we are going to talk about the constructor pattern. And for this series, most of the times we are going to be using a React application for demos. So without further ado, let's get started. What we have right now is a very simple React application, which has a to-do list component, which is being used here twice. If I go inside to-do list, you will see that it just has some dummy data, for instance, some of the commented data here, but I'm going to explain what we are talking about here. Essentially, these two to-dos are supposed to work as in you can click these buttons and this will add a to-do into the list. And this UL is supposed to map over all of the to-do array and then render those things. So we don't have anything right now, but we are going to start implementing. If I give you an overview of this whole application, we have the app component, we have the to-do list component, and then we have this to-dos.js where we are supposed to have a store for these to-dos where everything would be saved. So when we talk about the constructor pattern, what we want to do is that we want to have a class which we can create the instances of. So I'm going to call this to do's and let's actually create this. So we are going to say class to do's and here we are going to take a constructor. Now this to do's would contain a to do's array. So this would look something like this. Then we would have a get to do's method, which will essentially just return this dot to do's. Similarly, we would have an add to do method, which would essentially take a text here. So we could say to do text and here we could essentially say something like this dot to do's dot add or we could say push actually and then here we could say to do text now in this case what we are trying to do is just using to do as a text here now that we have this you can see that this to do's is being exported from here but then in the app js where or actually in the to do list js where we are using these to do's we have to use the new constructor here to essentially generate a new instance of this to do's now so far this actually works and you can see that some sort of functions here now what i want to do is that i want to be able to have some to do's here which don't exist so we do have a store here but what we want is essentially something like this so we could say store and then also actually we could say something like to do's set to do's now this to do's is just the array which we are trying to replicate from this particular array so we are going to take this array create a reference of it here and then render that here so we can say something like use state and here we could say something like store dot get to do's something like that when we do this we essentially would have nothing to show at the moment because we don't have anything created but now i'm going to uncomment this and you will see that we won't see any particular errors but this add to do button this should now add a to do into this list so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to uncomment this and you see what's happening here it is calling the add to do method which is this method it is passing a string here that you can see and it just adds some random number to it so if i just save this and click here you see that nothing changes because in react we need to re-render this by changing the state variable and that we can do by doing set to do's so once we have called this we need to do set to do's and then here we can do something like store dot get to do's something like this and once we do so now we should be able to add this for example you can see that it says to do's dot map is not a function so we need to see what's going on here we got store dot add to do which essentially adds to this then we also use the add to do here this sets the to do's dot push to do stacks and then we call the get to do's which essentially should get our array of the to do's which seems okay but what we want to do is to use something like this so if we do this save this and try this again you can see that we get an empty array which means that we are doing something wrong here which is displaying to do so i can remove this dot text from here and now if i try to add to do's you can see that everything works now with this constructor pattern what's happening is that for each component we are creating a new to do's store which is this one because this is a class which means that if i add a to do here it's going to be a completely different store as you can see that they are not exactly equal if i add one here it doesn't matter if i add one here it actually is a bit different so we are maintaining two different states so the constructor method is very suitable for the cases where we need 
separate instances of something. In this particular case, we are talking about two different store for to do's. Now, this may not be a real life scenario, but imagine that if you had multiple students and they would have set of marks for their subjects, you might want to have different stores for them because the subjects, even though they could have same subjects, but the marks for those two students would be at different places or in different store. So you could use this constructor method wherever you want to have a separation of concern or a separation of the stores or the instances themselves. Now, one thing that I want to add as a bonus is that the approach that we are using here is called ES6 classes for generating this constructor pattern or generating this class. If you used ES5, that would have been a lot different. Let's just see one neat little trick that I think you might not know. So what I'm going to do is that after set to do's, I'm going to essentially take the same thing and I'm going to just log this just so we can see that on the console log. So if I do this, let's see what happens. So I'm going to open the inspector here, not this IDE's console log, but the actual console log here. And now if I add a to do, you can see that we are adding multiple to do's. So we are talking about two different set of arrays. Let's talk about the left one. So right now, this is the left one you can see that all of this right now is essentially a particular array of strings let's say if i wanted to log store inside what would happen in that case so i'm going to save this let's try this now and you can see that we got this to do which has three to do's in the array if i add this one it has one so if we look at the left one which has three items in the array you can see that if i open this i only see the to do's array now the question is where did this get to do's and add to do go because i only see this array and the fun part is that if I open the prototype, I see them there. And this essentially tells us that these functions are only declared once in the memory, they are not declared multiple times within the memory. Now, if we used ES5 and a particular sort of notation for this one, this might be different. For example, I'm going to comment this one, but before I do so, I'm going to write the ES5 pattern of the same stuff, the constructor pattern. That would be something like function and we would say to do's and here we would have the same situation. Then we would have something like this dot to do's equals to something like this and then this dot get to do's would be a function in this case and here you would essentially have this return and similarly we would have something like this dot add to do equals and then the same sort of situation where we would have a function and here we would take the to do text and then we do this so we are going to just replicate all of this now if i kind of remove this you would see that it would essentially work like the same so if i do this you see we are creating the to do's you also see that we have this to do's object being shared but now do you see the difference now you also see the get to do's and the add to do methods here and that is because now for each instance for each to do's store we have a different function in memory for get to do's and add to do. Now, if for some weird reason you needed to use the ES5 syntax, the way around this would have been to use something like to do's dot prototype dot get to do's and doing the same thing instead of inside this function, doing it here. And I'm just teaching you for exposure. Uh, you may not need to work on this in your daily job. So I'm just sharing it for knowledge purpose. So if I do add to do, it would be something like this. And I also also need to say prototype here dot add to do and I can remove it from here now if I do this you will notice that the functions I've only moved them to be a prototype property for this to do's class or this to do's function and in ES5 if you name a function with a capital one or even if you don't do that if you use this that essentially acts like a constructor or something so if I do this let's say if I add this add this you see that now we only see to do's this array. We don't really see the functions, the get to do's and add to do's. And if I open any one of those, you will see that the prototype now has this add to do and get to do. You can see the difference right away. And this is exactly the same as what we did for our ES6 class, just like this. So when we did this, it was exactly the same thing. So if I open this, go to prototype, you see these functions right away. One thing that I noticed that this one is a bit in dim color while in ES5, it is a bit darker. I'm not sure why that happens, but I hope that this was enough information for you, at least for this video. Awesome. So I hope that you liked the video. If you did, press the thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments, which pattern should I cover next? Also share this video with others because they would find it useful as well. And as always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next one.